What's going on, everybody? It's Webster Style Brian Saff with another edition of the NRW Check Brink. Brian, how are you doing this evening? I am doing okay. How about yourself? I'm doing good. And and, and just yeah. before we go, I have to tell you, what's up? Star Trek Resurgence is everything I wanted it to be. <laughs> That's it good. is well yeah. worth my forty bucks. <laughs> and I've been then, hearing good things. Yeah, I'm about halfway through the game already. Oh, Makes really? Time. Yeah. And I will play through it again with different decisions. That's how good it is so far. Oh, okay, so it's one of those games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So happy for you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Well, that's that's last week, ladies and gentlemen. And and this week we have a slew of games. Some well, there's one really humongous title that we all are salivating salivating for. It. And myself, I'm like I need to buy a new system yesterday to play it, uh, but we'll get to that. But some notable remakes have come back and just some well-worn franchises are re-emerging with sequels for a new era. And let's start off with one of those. If you're into strategy games, we're off and running with Company of Heroes 3 dropping on the PS5 and Xbox Series systems. It's already out on PC for when I understand. It's from, it's a strategy game, as I said, from Relic Entertainment as a developer and publisher Sega. Company of Heroes 3 is a real-time strategy game developed by Relic Entertainment and published by Sega for Windows. In Company of Heroes 3, The players take the role of allied forces during the invasion of Italy and allied forces, excuse me, Axis forces in the northern, excuse me, North Africa or African campaign. Now, Brian, I um, I watched something the other night, just if I, I forget what it was on YouTube, talking about game genres that we don't see anymore. And I think the number one, was real-time strategy games that we don't see a lot of of real-time strategy games anymore, especially series. Mm -hmm. And this game is very much an anomaly in the aspect of you have a a big-time release, Mm -hmm. a series that has obviously done very well to get to a third installment, and you have Relic Entertainment, which is known for RTSs and a big time publisher in the form of Sega. So it's good to see that RTS is still a niche for them, but also that companies are really making these games accessible for consoles as well. Right. I agree. I feel like that's part of the reason why uh, real time strategy games are as small or are in as small of a place as they are. It's because, like, they usually are for a PC. And, you know, as much as gamers would like to have all consoles and have access to all kind of games, you know, we usually limit it to consoles or, you know, you know, just one device. So right. I like that they are uh, making this game or, yeah, making this game accessible for a console. This is the kind of stuff. That actually got me into PC gaming because you know I like strategy games. Um, Civilization was probably the, the strategy game that like compelled me the most to like play video games as far right. as turn based is concerned. Well, I guess we'll attribute that to Pokemon, but still, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this is definitely a I Pokemon catch thing, right? But um, as far as these type of games are concerned, yeah, like they usually locked in on PC and it is. It's I feel like them transition. Who is the entertainment relic entertainment at Sega? I like yeah. that they're saying, you know what, let's put it over on console because at this point, the the what is it considered current gen <laughs> PlayStation Five? Yeah, it's, current, it's weird. It's still weird to say. Yeah, even though it's been like two plus years now. Right. Well, just even the consoles of the last two generations, like they are more capable than PCs at this current time. Like, you know, console hardware is continuing to advance Mm -hmm. and PC is going into a place where you can get a faster PC if you spend a thousand dollars or you just build your own and that is more expensive. Either way, I say all that to say I like that they're putting this over on console because it'll give us console players some extra, you know, type of games. Because like me, I like online games, but Mm -hmm. I'm not I mean, battle royales. I have to be in the mood to play them. 
Right. And yeah, or you get like, I don't really care for sports games too much. I have to be in the mood to play them. Same thing with racing. Like any kind of game that has an element of online play, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of have to be in the mood to play it. Whereas real time strategy games is a little different because the pace is different. The the uh, availability of things that you can do is different because it's it's turn based. So I can't right. really, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a different thing there. Like with mobile games, you look at Marvel Snap, that's a turn based, well not turn based, but you know what I'm saying? Like no the, the rounds can't move forward until both players make a decision. Right. Games like that, they tend to be a little bit more peaceful and easeful. I look at Yu-Gi-Oh, the new duel masters. Um, card game or whatever it's the mm -hmm. same way it's a real time strategy game like you have to sit and wait for the other player to go and you have to make a decision before they turn and move on I feel like um, those games are doing well because they're on console <laughs> so right. or at least uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is but yeah shout out to um, Relic Entertainment you, and Sega for pushing you out. brought up a really good point though and I think that's something mm -hmm. that again I'm not saying there's going to be these, this tie change in public reception or games receptions to RTSs but one of the things we've talked about pretty much every episode is being different mm -hmm. and game companies doing something different. Mm -hmm. And RTSs are a, a small enough of a genre now where they're really different from anything else. And that right. could be something that could attract new players. I, I, I have never been into RTSs, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm dating myself here. But <laughs> uh, one of my best friends uh, from college, still one of my best friends, uh, when we all lived together, he was very much into RTSs, like sophomore year, junior year. Well, even in general. So I learned about StarCraft, WarCraft, Star Wars Galaxies, Command and Conquer, Conquer, because he'd be in his room playing all of those. And you're talking about 97, 98, 99, uh, when, you know, we were matriculating through college at that time. Mm -hmm. And but there was always a new real time strategy coming out, a major release. And obviously that is greatly waned now. So I'm, I'm thinking that something like this really could maybe not jumpstart, but really lead to newer uh, individuals finding the genre and really starting to love. And you could see somewhat of a resurgence of it. I know there are a lot of indie titles out there yeah. as well, but I think we all are getting bored with a lot of the, cookie cutterness that we're seeing in the industry and we even saw that we talked about last week with the playstation showcase uh that we <laughs> saw <laughs> um and how a lot of games really like they look like other things or they blur as far as yeah. you, like can we just get something different please so. yeah and I, I agree with you i think i don't know this 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 series is on three already but I feel like if we had an exciting enough game to come along and kind of shake things up, like real time strategy games could really be like a viable contender for like one of the greater genres of the game sphere. Because I don't think people even realize like how much they like real time strategy games because of the presentation. Right. But if you look at it, that's what Pokemon is. Like you, right. you catch your Pokemon, but when you battle somebody, it's a turn-based system. Like you, right. it's not, it's not live action where you have to be, you know, say quick. And I think, right. um, I think people once they realize like what real-time strategy games could be, we'll probably get more because <laughs> it's, it's frustrating playing like battle royales, like like uh, Apex or Fortnite or whatever, where it's like you have to be on your toes all the time. That does something to your nervous system right. to a point where you like breaking controllers and stuff. Real time strategy games, you really have the opportunity to like sit, plan your moves, think of what the opponent could do, how to counter that, and as a it's a different level of uh, thinking that goes into that. Especially if they tie in like a really good story to the game, that kind of like makes you understand what you're doing right. it for. Yeah, I, I think once people like really sit with RTS is to understand like it's it's a lot bigger than just something that can be contained on PC. They need to put more on console. Right. I agree. I agree. Next up we have, well, it's a series that has been dormant for a long time. This is the System Shock remake is on PC. We are watching a trailer for this one. It's an action game. It's from Night Dive Studios. It's on a PS4 or 5. Um, I'm sorry, PS4 and 5. Well, basically, 
all the console versions of it <laughs> yeah. are to be announced. Right. So they're coming, just don't know when. So oh, okay. as I said, it's a remake of the 1994 classic. In the year 2027, a nameless hacker gets into trouble while ca getting caught hacking files concerning Citadel Station, a space station owned by the powerful and influential Trioptimum Corporation. Now, I had never heard of this game <laughs> until Bioshock way back in the day because okay. Bioshock was is a spiritual successor to System Shock. Okay. And as someone who wasn't a PC gamer um, at that time, or I've never been a PC gamer, but the only PC games I knew about was Half-Life and, again, all of the RTSs mm -hmm. that I just referred to because of friends that I had that were PC gamers. Mm -hmm. I wasn't uh, a PC gamer, and even in, this is 94, so this is even pre-me going to undergrad before I met people who were PC gamers like that. Right. <laughs> um, but I've always heard good things about the series and how, you know, that game, without that game, we wouldn't have Bioshock and kind of how first person, first person games, not just shooters, but first person games evolved from Bioshock and that immersiveness and that storytelling that really System Shock was the game that really started all of it. So I'm very mm -hmm. interested to see one, the trailer when we watch a little bit later, but mm -hmm. to see how it really holds up to the original and what people say about it compared to the original game. I agree. I, I've never heard of System Shock. And if, I mean, it would make sense. It's, Came out in '94. I was four years old, so I can only think I could know how to spell game at that point. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, I'm down for this. Uh -huh. I like I like games that reveal origins of popular games. So Same. you say this one kind of like made it possible for Bioshock to run. Yes. Okay, I'm interested. Next up, we have Etrian Odyssey Origins Collection on the Switch and PC as an RPG from. Of course, Atlas. <laughs> the Trin Odyssey Origins Collection includes HD versions of the original trilogy alongside several other improvements, including a remastered soundtrack to go along with remastered graphics, various, excuse me, various quality of life improvements, including difficulty selection and save slots, easy access to the monster copendinium, copendium, excuse me, skill tree and quest log, plus 24 new character portraits. So, it's Atlas. It's an RPG. We kind of know what we're getting. Yeah, man. <laughs> with this name. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Odyssey. No, no, no. That's fine. But yeah, definitely fantasy adventure. Right. So mm -hmm. next up, we have a game that I I saw it, but then when I read the description, I said, oh, we have to watch the trailer for this. We have to <laughs> And it's called Killer's Fre Killer Frequencies on the PS4, 5, Xbox One, SX, Switch, PC, and Quest which I thought was weird, but okay. Quest. Um, Wait, what is the Quest? What? You know, Oculus Quest? Oh. So or Meta Quest? Or whatever, okay. whatever the hell they want to call themselves now. So is this, right, is this virtual? Okay. That's what I thought too, but do you... I don't see PSVR, but okay. I guess it'll make right. it there eventually. Uh, okay. So it's from Team 17, and we've, we've seen them before in some of their games. I couldn't tell you where, but... It, We've seen them, especially over the past few years, as far as that their output, and they've made some very unique games. But Killer Frequency mm. is an 80s style, excuse me, an 80s style slasher shredded first person horror adventure game mm. where you are Force Nash, a late night radio host whose callers are being stalked by a mysterious killer. This sounds like an 80s slasher movie, and I'm all <laughs> for it. Yeah, it does. It sounds like something I'll be interested in watching as well. I don't know. Something about, I want to say like 90s and 80s horror films, they weren't really like scary. They just, It was the story. It's the campiness of it. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Yeah. Like, I don't know why, and I'm not sure you're familiar. I just remember, like, I heard that even though it has nothing to do with it. I just picture like Maniac Cop with okay. <laughs> a radio like the maniac cop is is stalking the people from the radio station mm. and i'm just thinking of that movie with this added added flair to it 
y'all y'all know about radio mania cow let me know up in, up in the uh, <laughs> comments that might be a bit obscure for some of y'all folks especially y'all young whippersnappers out there <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i was like oh we have to watch the trailer i have to see what this is about okay cool all right next up is a game that really really needs no introduction doesn't hadouken all right three five to six <laughs> Uh, PS4, 5, Xbox Series systems, PC. Of course we're watching the trails, but come on right. now. Yeah. Uh, do I really have to tell you what genre this is? No, of course like, not. Real, real. All right, it's fighting game. Title. You know it's from Capcom. All right, so Street Fighter 6 is the next evolution in the Street Fighter series, and it features innovative gameplay features plus enhanced visuals for every aspect of the game powered by capcom's proprietary re engine the street fighter 6 experience pans spans across three distinct game modes fighting ground world tour and battle hub can we talk about how capcom just keeps knocking them out of the park they because they understand they understand now, it yeah, was a couple it, years though they didn't get it yeah, they was like one, two, three. It was like, okay, this is the same game. We're like, come on, something else. But they, they, well, they heard us. They listened, and he was like, you know what? It's time to evolve the Street Fighters franchise in a direction that will, you know, entice new players as well as old ones to return. I think this is gonna be the one that like sets up the Street Fighter franchise to go. I agree. Because I mean, you talking about. And one of the things about Street Fighter Five, it was locked to the PlayStation, which sucked ass. But and I know Sony gave them money and helped with development because yeah. Capcom was back at that time. Capcom was hurting. Yeah, like they just they couldn't buy a hit back then. Was six seven years ago? Mm. Drastic change from what it is now. Right. Uh, but the common complaints with Five was it was really bare bones when it launched, and then they yes. wanted to sell you everything else. Mm -hmm. after the fact i may be incorrect on that part of it but i know for a fact it was very bare bones for a full price title and people were very upset with it yeah in contrast from everything i've seen about this game that is not the case it is not bare bones you are getting your 70 dollars worth from the modes they have that cr create a player mode the world tour yeah oh. yes and did, did and, I send you the the video where somebody created Ice Spice? Yes, <laughs> that yes. was that was bananas. But see, but see, you see how that looks, right? Yeah, because I remember we talked about this. I played the um, demo. I've been playing the demo. Right. That's how detailed the the world player mode is. And I tell you, I spent an hour like customizing my character down from like shoulder width to exact height. Uh, where the placement of like you can you can literally say I want my character to have a long torso and short legs, and they'll they'll let you edit this kind of stuff. So I, that's why I say I really think this is going to be the one that like sets up the franchise right. to continue to be great, but like in a more elevated way because that world tour mode it is really good. I enjoy the graphical improvements because right. five looked good, but you know. Yeah, six looks amazing. It looks is absolutely. It, it looks. It's next really great. Gen. Yes, like yeah, I that's... think, in my opinion, this is this is one of the first games. And again, I know it was on PS4 as well, mm -hmm. but this is one of the first games I've seen in the past two years where, on any system, where I say this looks next generation. Yeah, and it's just really impressive, um, especially in the, I'm looking at what like. Uh, was it four is still on the Xbox? That's from 360 year. You got five, like those look good, yeah. Honestly, I think four doesn't look that much better than, than excuse me, five doesn't look that much better than four in mm -hmm. comparison, in my opinion. So, I think there's also a lot of people who got let down, but you see the graphical jump from six, and, and this RE engine that they have is just. It's just a winning form. Like it really, they have learned how to adapt it from everything. And I, I believe it was created for seven, if mm -hmm. not um, the RE2 remake. Okay. So, I mean, that's pretty much every game they put out has been using that engine since then. And it's a hit. They've, they've refined the formula, they've tweaked it, they're using different genres. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, actually, no. 
I feel I think Exo Primal uses the RE engine too. Okay. And I'm looking forward to that when that comes out because I played the beta and that it was like they are really doing the damn thing with their games. And I'm wondering and, and we ain't even talking about Monster Hunter, how successful that's been for them. Right, right, right. But it's, Street Fighter Six is it gives me the it gives me feels of like Super Smash Brother, what was it, Ultimate Melee, whatever the last one was, mm-hmm. where it gives you such a robust base game that you know they're going to be character packs and characters. Yeah, You won't mind buying characters because the right. game is so good. You will want to add to that. You want you don't mind. This is a game where you don't mind it being live service because it's the base model is so robust mm. that you don't even care if they try to sell you other stuff because you don't have to buy it. It's not right. a, oh, they give you bare bones and you have to buy everything. Like Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers is great. You can buy all the characters, but you don't, you know, you don't have to buy everything to get the complete game. Right. And with this game, Capcom just has another hit. And then the, the reviews are have been great. I don't think anybody's given this less than like a 90, maybe yeah. an 88. <laughs> what I've seen which, so far. <laughs> which I'm excited about because that just means to me, that says to me that when the game like all the way launches officially, like it's going to have a nice amount of people. I, the servers might crash first day. Right. You know what I'm saying? In the um, <laughs> the online play mode or whatever. But I, I, I don't know, man. Like I was surprised. It's the first Street Fighter game in a long time where I'm like, oh, I have exactly. to get this. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I, I haven't it. cared about a Street Fighter game since maybe the 30th anniversary collection, and mm-hmm. I wasn't even that enthralled to like, oh, I need to buy this. Yeah, like for there real, was a for point real. in time where I was like, you know what? I wouldn't be mad if if Capcom just stopped doing Street Fighters and they focused on doing Marvel versus Capcom, like bringing those back out. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It was five Five did something where it was like. It put everybody like on notice, like, no, we still know how to make a good Street Fighter game. We just want to, you know, take all your money. Right. Six, I feel like they perfected it. Right. Like, and they know exactly what they want this to do. I really like that the world tour mode kind of, well, not the world tour mode, but the, well, yeah, yes and no. They do things in the game to kind of flesh out the story that we already know and love about right. these characters. I don't know. I feel like it's going to be a really, really good game. People are really going to be um, locked into that world tour mode, I believe. I'll say this much, and I know it's not an apples-to-apples comparison, Mm -hmm. um, but I really think Tekken 8 is going to have to bring it. They got to. (laughs) And I'm not saying as far as the innovation of Tekken Mm -hmm. because of what Street Fighter has done in in Street Fighter 6 or what Capcom has done it has totally innovated the franchise franchise mm-hmm. and done things they've never done before. And I think I hopefully Namco follows suit with Tekken 8. I mean, Mortal Kombat's already done that. And yeah, they're doing they, it again with Mortal Kombat 1. So I'm not worried right. about what they do because they, they proved that in Mortal Kombat 11, they know what to do with the series, to innovate mm-hmm. and re, reinvent it. And they've really reinvented it with Mortal Kombat 1 right. uh, coming out later on. But Tekken is the only series, in my opinion, fighting series, major fighting series, that really has not evolved as much. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say... No, I agree. I would say uh, Tekken. Yes, I agree with that. And I will also add on Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur has been kind of locked in a place where it's been kind of the same game for a long Let time. Let me be frank. Who's cared about Soul Calibur since Soul Calibur 2? I mean, I'm being for real, for real. I mean, I, isn't it on 6 now? Well, we are in the franchise. I, yeah, something like that. I, look, it's the only going. Soul Calibur game I want to play is 1. I don't care about any of it afterwards. And again, that's because I'm an old school point. retro. I'm a, I'm an old gray gray hair dude. Okay, great. <laughs> but realistically, who's gotten excited for Soul Calibur after Soul Calibur two? I mean, that's for real, for real. That's my point. Like, <laughs> it's it's it, you. It like Soul Calibur came out. You was putting that next to Street Fighter. And, yes, and, and and uh, Mortal Kombat and Tekken and everything. Like it was them, but. 
somewhere along the way, Street Fighter. I mean, Soul Calibur just kind of fell out of the wayside, which is crazy because this is one of the better looking games. Yes, out of the, out and of the innovative bunch. because it was a right. weapons based fighter. Now, right. look, all y'all out there, you can at me on Twitter <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> look, I'm not dissing you because you like Soul Calibur. We're talking no, about in mass. We're talking about conversations for us fighting games. The conversations that people have in the gaming circles and in the general public at large, we're talking mm -hmm. about on a regular basis, Tekken, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Smash Brothers. Yes. That's it. Nobody, the general, everybody knows what a Smash Brothers is. Everybody knows what a Street Fighter is. Right. Nowadays, nobody, there's no conversation about Soul Calibur. People like me know about it because I played in an arcade when it was so edge before it's, the sequel came out with Soul Calibur. <laughs> but let's really talk about current gamers. Are they really up on Soul Calibur like that? The Soul Calibur yeah. have the lineage? No. So going back to Tekken, Tekken really needs to innovate with eight. And Street Fighter is just going to show them up if they don't do that because right. Capcom is innovating with Street Fighter 6. I agree. And and before we move on, I also have to just make make sure we um acknowledge how I guess Eastern civilization, all of all of the Japanese gaming fighting titles have kind of invigorated these other titles to be better. Yes. Because I would like to say that Street Fighter Five, the reason it was so bare bones and they were trying to sell you every character and everything was because of what Dragon Ball Fighter Z did. But there was mm. a difference there because obviously Dragon Ball Fighter Z has a built-in fan base and they didn't just give us like 10 characters. They really gave and Namco us published that one too? Uh Cyber Connect too? Possibly. I'm not even I'm not even sure who. I only ask because Namco tends to have a lot of those anime properties that they publish. They probably did. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I, I do. I do like remember like when that happened with Dragon Ball's Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Like that's when you know Five came out for Street Fighter and it was like another game we got about the characters, but Fighter Z had like, a plethora of characters you mm -hmm. can unlock. And just you know, coming out of the gate, is that the one they're remaking? Or is um, it Budokai? Oh, no, that's yeah, Budokai. Okay, Budokai's coming back, and also, um, everything that the jump shonen jump games have done, yes, but like because that fighting open style again, something that kind of uh, soul caliber kind of in Tekken, you know, like a roll and then the, 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 right. the map shifts. I, I just want games to be better and i like that street fighter is doing that right. i'm I'm glad it's better too that that's again i already know why so over that i have a very good <laughs> suspicion that mortal kombat 1 is going to live up to the hype especially based on what 11 was like mm. ed boone and may stupid it's tech and i'm worried about but if both of those come out in addition to street fighter this year mm -hmm. and both of those are are really game changers for there or major innovations in their franchises shit <laughs> like i mean that's a whole lot of money getting taken in in for not even a trifecta if microsoft could try to find a way to make killer instinct great again because the that's last killer instinct was good i love playing that game in game pass <laughs> but it's it's one of those things where I hope if they're redeveloping it, they gotta be, they, they got to come with it. Yeah, they got to come with it. They got to come with it. They yeah. really got to come with it. All right, so let's leave that there. We're fighting games. <laughs> we talk about that. But we're talking about Namco, and let's talk mm -hmm. about another longtime Namco franchise that is back, Katamari Damacy. And we <laughs> love Katamari Reroll and Royal Reverie for the PS4, 5, Xbox One, SX, Switch, and of course PC. Adventure okay. game from developer Monkey Craft and a publisher Bandai Namco. We love Katamari Reroll. Royal Reverie is a <laughs> remaster featuring quality of life enhancements and new modes such as selfie mode and eternal mode. Five new challenges 
challenges themed around the story of the young king of all cosmos, along with all new collectibles to roll up. Now, Brian, have you ever played? Well, that's probably yes, but have you ever played any Katamari Damacy games? Um, not that I can recall. Not that I can recall. I'm not. I'm. We're watching the trailer. We not. I'm having a hard time even picturing. Is that what the uh, the onion shaped things? No, you like roll up and you got to collect all the stuff and you got to make your ball bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, I've played a demo for a Same. game. Like that. Um, is it Little Big Planet? Which what's the game? Or is it Sack Boy? One of these games that had the same kind of thing where you push the ball and it just keep getting bigger as you collect. I played it okay. for that. I can't think of the name specifically. Okay. Though. I, I'm not saying I've never understood the appeal of Katamari Damacy. <laughs> I get it. It is it is an accessible game for everybody. Right. And that is one of the things I think why this has endured for so long. I mean, this... Mm. I feel like this series started on the PlayStation 2, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, so it's it's been going around for a long time. I think, if not the three, but I, I would bet money is is the two. Don't hold me to that though. Uh, but with this, this is something we've seen a lot of, and I think that I'm getting a bit frustrated with. So what's that? All these remasters. Mm. Not even yeah. a remake, a remaster. I mean, we got just two already on this list. I think every week at least one game is a remake or remaster, a remaster of something. Remakes yeah. are fine because right. remakes mean you take the essence of the game and you redo it from the ground up mm-hmm. for a new generation. And like, you know, System Shock we talked about earlier. But I understand you're trying to get that money. Let's be frank. In a lot of aspects, Make things seem backwards compatible. Yeah. And then add to. a patch to it. I mean, it's... If you make it backwards compatible, you can charge... You can... Look, I have a problem at times when I see games that are backwards compatible on Xbox and some companies still charging 20 bucks. I'm like, you want me to pay $20 for a 15-year-old game? Right. <laughs> With I, no I, enhancements? Right. And I think that's the... the well... Obviously really? The goal is to get you to spend money. <laughs> I, U- Ubisoft is is prime for that uh, as far as their backs are compatible stuff when they're not on sales. Like I am not, I am not paying, I am not paying twenty bucks for Far Cry Three or whichever the one with Voss. I was like, are you out of your mind? Yeah. Like really? Like, but there are companies that do that. But mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind if you did that. Say, okay, say base, okay, 20-year-old game or 15-year-old game, you make it backwards compatible, if if possible, but then you add a patch to it to, you know, give these extra modes and, you know, you charge $5 extra for it. Mm-hmm. That's perfectly fine in my opinion. Yeah. But all of these remasters, that's really low-hanging fruit because, let's be frank, how much development money are you really putting into re- re- remastering an old game, maybe from the previous generation, or even what we are. This is probably what PS3 era that this mm-hmm. game came out for. Uh, if it's a remaster, so yeah, PS3, Eight, PS2 or three. It's cheap. It's really cheap, and is really as a gamer, is getting on my nerves. And yes, I am spoiled because of the level of backwards compatibility of backwards on the Xbox and how with the previous generation, they made a concerted effort to upgrade most of those games that are backwards compatible to look better and in some instances play better on the next gen hardware. In that case, would have been Xbox One and then up to Xbox Series X. And mm-hmm. now there are games that from Xbox One era that are, are getting upscaled to run at a higher fidelity on Xbox Series S and X. And I think PlayStation is doing something similar since they have back subscribed from four to five. Mm-hmm. But these remasters, they just rub me the wrong way from a consumer standpoint, personally. I agree. I agree. I'm not I'm not really into all the remasters and stuff. Like if they if I played a game back then and I like it like that, um I probably still <laughs> still want to pay for it. I've I've bought one game over again that i've had on playstation one 
and it came in the PlayStation Store, and I was able to buy it and play it on um, four. I was like, okay, because I really liked the game, and I really want them to like remaster it or remake it. I don't want to remaster; I want to remake it. I need newness to it. But I don't think every gamer like cares like that. These are not. Well, I guess this game is a cotton market because you're just rolling a ball around, right? I guess it's simple enough that people will want want it for like nostalgia purposes. It's just something to have to play or whatever. But yeah, if you, I prefer the remake over the remaster. Yeah, I agree. Remaster, I, I, I mean, if you want making me to spend the graphics my money, look better, but what, you want to charge me a reasonable that? price, mm-hmm. make it worth my time and effort. Personally speaking. I mean, in my hard-earned dollars, I, I would rather you like that uh, the live alive, you know, and what they did with that, and really, it, you know, it was like a slash remaster slash remake. They add a lot of things, they change gameplay, but it was a drastically different game than the one that came out on Super Family Com or the, mm-hmm. whatever system it was. That's how you do it. That's what entices players to buy that game or buy that game for a second time. You know, I'm listening. You know, I'm thinking. I'm making a concerted effort not to rebuy something I bought before, even if I don't have access to it. Right. <laughs> that, that's just me. Um, no, I'm with you. Like, or even double dip. I was like, I have this on this system. I don't need it on that one. Or right. um, and for me, that goes to a lot of retro titles. But I just say I don't like I'm not buying this again. Are you no? Yeah. Like, why do I need like for instance? I have I own Bayonetta and Vanquish. I own the regular standard Xbox 360 versions of those. Mm-hmm. Why am I going to buy the HD versions of those? Right. It ain't that serious. It's not. And it's really just an HD. It's not even, <laughs> you know, real humongous tweaks or changes to the gameplay. Right. So, yeah. You know, it, things like that, you know, they've really, really burned me up. Or, you know, yeah, I can see something like this, though. A tree was like on. Or a, a train, or in this case, Katamari, if these were games that want to say the PSP or, you know, some system you can't get them on anymore. Mm. Okay, that's understandable. But a lot of times that ain't the case. And, you know, these companies are just out there. Just let's just slap a coat of paint on it, tweak the code, make it a little look a bit prettier. Mm-hmm. And go at least Square is much as they charge for those pixel remasters. That was something new indifference mm-hmm. with Final Fantasy 1 through 6. It wasn't just the same old version of the NES game that we know of. So, Agreed. Alright, that's our rant, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into some trailers. Uh, <laughs> first up, we have a remake in the form of System Shock. The wonders of modern technology. Making life easier for millions of people. Turn around! Down! What could possibly be <laughs> wrong? Welcome to my death machine. Okay, what is it? Hmm. The fact that the AI said it was her death machine right there made the problem. Right. <laughs> Do you think you can stand up Talk to God? Oh. I, I, I will shape the earth in, in, in my in my image. I will evolve. All moving things. good. Yeah. You will serve me well. Heck, <laughs> it's crazy because I'm looking at it and I can tell they remade this game and it because it, it, it looks like it. But the, the way the reason that it looks like it the most to me is because the gameplay looks smoother than the cutscenes. Yes, I can tell they 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 was like, you know what, we'll put. <laughs> we'll put a little patch over this to try to smooth out some of these pixels, but in essence, we have the code for the the gameplay. Right. So let's smooth that out. And I can tell that's what they did. Right. Right. I'm looking forward to that. I'll, I'll definitely check that out when it comes out on consoles. That was pretty pretty neat. Yeah, it was dope. 
Next up, we have a remaster, and this is a Trian Odyssey Odyssey's, excuse me, a Trian Odyssey Origins collection. <laughs> Get ready to dive back into the depths of the Labyrinth Explorers. Etrian Odyssey Origins Collection remasters three timeless adventures for the first time in HD. Okay. See, that's Pokemon right there. Every great Odyssey starts with a glorious guild. Lead a team of adventurers to greatness. Tailor every expedition with the perfect party composition through a vast combination of eager adventurers to recruit from. Become the heroes of the Uncharted Labyrinth. Outline and note your findings using the tools at hand. Map out your journey using the new auto mapping feature on both Nintendo Switch and PC. With a new discovery around every turn, always remember to mark your map. Unearthing hidden treasures and investigating hidden truths are what legends are made of. But be warned, the Labyrinth is a dangerous and unforgiving place. With the promise of glory and riches, you must be ready to defeat anything and everything that comes your way. Use everything at your disposal to achieve victory. Fortune favors the brave. Pre-order is available. Start your adventure on June 1st, 2023. All right, See, so I need to find out what systems the original games were on. But first of all, <laughs> I... And I think I said this before, I am really, I really hate this whole, it's just a picture or a, a really mm -hmm. detailed, you know, cutout that you're fighting with the characters, just anime characters, no sort of movie. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so what was this on before? I, I'm getting the vibes of this might have been like a, a 3DS game or some sort of handheld game that yeah. they mastered. Um, Definitely yeah, that's, Game Boy. <laughs> personally speaking, there's nothing about this that says, you should play this. It looks boring as all hell to me. Yeah, the the combat is not. It ain't where it's supposed to be. It's like a flash game. Yeah, and I ain't trying to go back. Nah. <laughs> flash games were cool when they was cool, but yeah, I mean, I like the the newness to it because we just had a conversation about this. They added something different with the whole map system and everything like that. How you can, you know, auto map it place markers and stuff like that like i like that they're trying to give the game um another element to it to enhance the gameplay but right. the battle the battle system look the battle thing look the whole sequence just look i don't want to stare at a picture and just watch little cut marks go across it like i did that with pokemon for who knows i don't remember how long it took for them to start animating right. the, the characters like I don't want to go through that again. So, I mean, somebody would be down for it. It is what it is. Nostalgia will always find a way that to pull some true. money out of people's pockets. Right. So that's that's cool on that side of things. But you know, let's let's get into remaking instead of remastering. I, I just agree. really want that to happen because <laughs> they totally did agree. something really amazing with Final Fantasy VII. That whole entire remake. It was phenomenal. They made a whole new game. It just had the same story as the first game. As the you right. know, let's original. not talk about Resident Evil Two. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, give me something. But right. it is what it is. What right. trailers next? Next up, let's fight. It's not even a trailer. <laughs> we just watching a fight from Street okay. Fighter Six. Let's go. Let's do it. How is this match going to shake out? It's going to be exciting to see. All right, you ready? This will be a good like party. they really, I can tell. Like they was like, we're not putting yeah. this game. What are we going to do? To uh, illustrators, animators, and everybody do exactly what they Stop the attack! Yeah. Hold the perfect pair. How will they follow right. up? Perfect in time. Like this is my the opponent attack. You don't want to get caught in that situation too many times. Uses the target combo to take a chunk of damage off the opponent. Player one. This it looks absolutely out of right. Yeah, man. Hey, remember, uh, they have a, uh, they have a uh, feature in there that will allow you to set your control to be, you know, if you want to be a button master, you can do that. 
or if you want to just go back to how it was in arcade, give them a psychological advantage. You uh -huh. have a mode a setting in there, like that. Sand blast. Nice. Who's going to start things off? Man, they got Ryu looking like with the Chad and whatnot. <laughs> Amazing need to flash the parry. Just Ryu, I'm gonna take your girl. <laughs> Can't use any drive moves without burning out. The throw missed. Player experiencing burnout. This is beautiful. Player two has an empty drive beat. This is a very oh no, they're stunned. Player one holding on to that corner advantage. Oh, what's this? Ah, burnout activates. Player one has depleted their drive beat. Oh, putting the cherry on top. Still alive? Still alive? Somebody's jar the about kill. to be They're still in this! <laughs> and your ash is out the cage right there! <laughs> this is gonna kill! No doubt about it! <laughs> what a finish! <laughs> Gotta hand it to both of our fighters! They put on a real clinic for us! So basically, Ryu blew his load too early. And Luke <laughs> came in to finish him nervous. off. Right. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, Street Fighter Six. Let's uh, go to well, some '80s theme slasher puzzle horror fun, Killer Frequency. Resume recording. Peggy Twelve. Oh my God! Oh my God! Man, you got the tracking from the VHS tape. I can't do this. Tell me, what's your name? Carrie. Good, good, I Carrie. This listen to me. Like we're gonna get you out of there. Our style here. I love this. Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. The Whistling Man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. Ain't got much time left. I'm lost, right. Forrest. I don't know where I am. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. Where's the key? The, the roof! It's coming down! I need someone here now or I'm gonna die. Call Jericho. How the hell did I get into this mess? Hey, Big Shot, hit the button and take the call. Interesting. Yeah, I was about to say. That's different. That's very different. Yeah. I like that. So, so you you have to take calls on your radio show to like find out who the killer is. is it that... seems like it. Oh, well, that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. I like you know we always like unique premises here, right? Or premises, whatever the word is. All right, Brian. <laughs> so that's it for this week. What's going on with you over the at the talk and play blur cast? Um, I'm currently in production. Uh, the next episode. I've uh, got some things in the headlines, some very, very interesting things. I found out about uh, Mr. Springer's passing and where his money is going to go. That's going to mm. be interesting. <laughs> That's a very, very interesting conversation. Um, then I do the uh, I go over the PlayStation showcase in the game chat as well as I started back playing a game. Remember earlier in the year? We had a segment where we, you know, went over all the games we want to get out of our back catalog. Yes. Started back playing once. I should be completed soon. Okay. <laughs> and then new music, obviously, to talk about. Yeah, a little bit of TV, you know, some stuff I started. I think we talked about it last week. The um the unicorn eternal warrior show, whatever on the Dope yes. Swim. Yeah. Yes. And more episodes came out, so We'll be talking about that in the uh, watch list. But that's pretty much it. Man. Just another episode coming down the pipeline. What about yourself? Uh, it's a lot going on. Uh, time of this recording uh, interview with the lovely Carmela Clutch should be dropping, as well as my full review slash impressions of Star Trek Resurgence. And uh, 150 of the Sartorian Geek podcast is finally taking shape. So if it's not out by the next time we record, it's definitely going to be in the recording stages uh, by the next time we record because there's a lot going on with that episode. And in addition to there are a couple other interviews that I have down the pipe, pipe that I'm not going to announce 
quite just yet until they're in the can, but that's what's going on with me. But of course, you're currently rocking with, well, you know where you are, Narrows Through the World. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on Instagram at New Release Wednesday. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the NLW. And you're currently, of course, on YouTube. So make sure you like, share, and more importantly, subscribe. Right now.